We want to welcome you to University United Methodist Church. where we are a Christ-centered community of believers engaging disciples into mission.
morning. This is Pastor John here at University United Methodist Church. And of course, this is a good opportunity for us to open the word of God one more Sunday or whatever day you're watching the sermon. But for us to talk about what God is doing in this season in our own life, uh, we will be looking at Luke chapter seven, uh, verses 11 through 17. So I hope you have your mobile device or your Bible prepared as we began to listen and hear and read uh, what thus says the Lord in this season. So this is a moment right after we see the healing of a centurion's uh, slave. But this is a, something that's a little bit different. It's going to remind us a little bit about Lazarus, but I want you to really hone me in on what and who has died and what Jesus does to transform one person's life by giving life to another. So let us go ahead and join in and come together in prayer and we'll see what God has for us in this season. Let us pray. Dear God, we come to you, your children, your servants, knowing that you are in control. But Lord, in our life, God, you have placed us in different places and stages. But Lord, where we are right now, we recognize that you are in control. So as you are in control of everything that is happening around us, God, we ask that you continue to pour into us new faith, new opportunities, new hope, knowing that you are in control. So Lord, touch us where we are. If it's healing that we desire, Lord, heal. If it's restoration, if it's deliverance, Lord, be that for us. And God will continue to serve you as best we can, growing in our faith, being more like Christ as we watch you work miracles in our life. Amen. So this is a, a portion in the Bible in Luke chapter 7, starting at verse 11. And I know some of us are familiar with this text, but we're going to look at it a little bit different on today uh, because there's a message that is here that is for every person. Uh, but before I jump into it, I want to remind you that a lot of stuff that we see in our text uh, is, of course, um, prepared and leaning towards a, a masculine, um, male-driven society. But that's important in this because we're going to see how Jesus deals with that and how we in our life today can rely on Jesus for meeting us, even when it seems like things around us are not for us. So let us join in and read the scripture together. So Luke chapter 7, uh, verse 11 starts here. It says, soon afterwards, he went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. This is interesting because, of course, we are about to see another miracle um, that Jesus is preparing. It says, as he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out, and his, this was his mother's only son, and she was a widow, and with her was a large crowd from the town. So I want to put a pause there and remember where I'm at so I can remember where we're going when we leave out of this. So we see Jesus now approaching into this town. And of course, there is a funeral procession that is happening. There's a young man who has died. And of course, his mother is leading this procession as they are going to the place where he will be laid to rest. The interesting part of, about this is it is understood and clear to us that this is the woman's only son. The problem that comes with that in our own culture or in their culture is that now this woman, this widow who has no husband now has no son. This also means that there is no one who is present to take care of this widowed woman. So once her son, who now is dead, is laid into the ground, she becomes what we consider a uh, homeless or she's also a person that will be left out begging in the streets because she will not receive the inheritance that her son has received or that has passed down in her family line. So even if he had property or land because she is a woman, she will not receive any of this. So this funeral procession is not just for her son. This is also her funeral. And we see the crowd who was walking and sometimes we have to be mindful of the crowd because everybody who is at the funeral isn't there to pay their respects. Some people realize that once this boy is in the ground, everything that they have, you can go and take and ramsack or it begins to be shifted around to other family persons because she's a woman. 
This creates a different dynamic. And so this woman who is a strong woman who is now walking with this funeral procession, y'all, she's leading it out. She's not in, in this pity moment of saying, I'm nobody. I'm going to be uh, left behind or forgotten about. She is still here leading her son into the ground, knowing that once he is laid there, She'll have no identity. This woman here is doing something different and we got to kind of watch and see what is happening in this moment. Y'all, as Jesus approaches this town, he sees this funeral. He knows that there is a woman who is there who, in a brief moment, will have nothing. The home she lives in, the property, the cow, the pigs, the sheep, goats, whatever they had, is gone. Jesus begins to look at this moment. And we have to see what happens next. So the next verse, verse 13, says this. When the Lord saw her, it said that he had compassion for her. And he said to her, Do not weep. Then he came forward and he touched the coffin. It says, and the bearer stood still and he said, young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak and Jesus gave him to his mother. Now put a pause right there because y'all, this is some crazy stuff. So all of a sudden they are carrying this, this dead young man to his grave site. And all of a sudden, Jesus interrupts the procession. Jesus interrupts the procession into the grave. And he looks at the woman. And he sees that she is not well. He observes that here it is, she is there weeping. For her son that has gone, yes. For her life that is transformed, yes. For for going into poverty, yes. Jesus understands that this woman sealed with her head up is crying, but yet she is still going to the grave. She has accepted the fact that she, after this moment, will be a person transformed forever, having nothing, being someone and now no one. But this lady is still walking step by step. She has accepted the fact that it's over. Brothers and sisters in this season, some of us have had goals in our life, desires and hope, hopes that we would be something, transform or do something. Yeah, the desire for answered dreams and prayers, uh, uh, going after certain uh, tasks, you had this built up inside, but at some point you realize it's over. And so you stopped. <laughs> And you began to lick your wounds and say, it's done. But y'all, this is something that's a little bit different. What's different about this story is that even though she has accepted death, even though you have accepted death, even into our acceptance of that which does not exist, our failures, our, our, our dreams have been shattered and crushed, even in the midst of all of that, Jesus steps in, stops the funeral, He stops the procession and he observes the woman as he is observing you. And he brings her son back. Now, I know some of y'all saying, wait a minute, what what are you trying to say? Some of you have given up on God already. Some of you have decided that God cannot fix the situation that you're in. Some of you have said that God has spoken to me, given me vision, but yet nothing happened, so I'm giving up. All of you have said, maybe this was not what God really intended, so you are prepared to walk that thing into the tombs. You are prepared to give up saying and believing that this is it, and God has no more say so. Y'all, if you are there in your life, I want you to know that something different can happen. God does doesn't have to transform things that's happening right now. Y'all, we serve a God that at any moment can bring death back into life. That means that God can resurrect something that we have already given up on. Some people have said, well, it wasn't for me. I'm going to stop. This is the end. Y'all, even at the end, God can create life. Even at the end, God can start something new. Even when you've given up, that doesn't mean that God has given in. That means that God has an opportunity for you and for us to be transformed. But the power of God is saying, I don't have to do it. 
while you're yet still here. He's saying, I can pull into nothing and bring back something. He begins to work a miracle because he sees the need of this woman. Y'all, he gave her son back to her because she needed him. He gave her back her identity, her property, her belongings, her prayers, her desires, whatever it may be, by bringing her son back to her. So when she leaves the burial site that day, she went back to her home. She didn't go back to the streets. Y'all, in the midst of death, God can create life. But I promise you this, even if it seems like it's over, y'all, faith says God can turn that thing back around in the midst of deadness and bring life. I know that sounds crazy, but even out of a corpse, he saved two people. So the problem with this takes many times is we will celebrate and say, oh, he's just like Lazarus. And the biggest portion with many people is they say, well, the prophets did it and Jesus did it. Jesus is a prophet. But y'all check this out. Jesus is doing more than bringing back the boy. <laughs> He's doing more than stopping the death march in our life. He's doing more than stopping us who have given up. He's doing more than just giving us hope. Y'all, he is saving and resurrecting the young boy, but he is, he is also transforming how we see life and how we accept reality through faith. Y'all, that is important at this time because he is doing more than raising Lazarus from the dead. He has given this woman back her identity in a system where women had no voice, had no power. He's given her son back. He has decided that when everyone else gave up, even life gave up. Christ became life. Even when we were prepared for death. Christ gave us life. And y'all, this is a different story that we must begin to look at because something different is happening. Let us continue. So now we find ourselves at verse uh, 16. And this is the response that many of us would have because we are church folks, all regular people. Verse 16 says this, fear seized all of them. It says, and they began to glorify God, saying a great prophet has risen among us. And God has looked favorably on his people. This word about him spread throughout Judea. It says in all the surrounding country. Y'all, this is the response of us because we don't believe it. We don't believe it until we see it. Because many of us will operate on what we see. Faith should tell us that we who follow Christ has already seen this today. Many of them have heard the stories, but of course they saw this happen in their own eyes. But y'all, sometimes we lose faith to realize that God is still raising people from the dead today. How many times have we heard testimonies of people saying that he was gone or she was dead and all of a sudden they have come back? Now, yeah, people will say, oh, well, they were in the hospital. Y'all, it doesn't matter. That is death back into life. But if we go back into our own personal issues that are beyond the body, but the, 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 the spiritual, we realize that things that we have given up on. God can resurrect for us. There are persons on this, uh, this, this sermon today who has given up on friends or family because of situations in the past. But I promise you, when there has been death to a situation, God can bring back life. If God has given you visions in your life and you say, God, it never manifested. We never saw it. I don't know what happened. God, where were you? And we get so upset. Y'all, even when you have given up, God can step in and create life. We must believe that God can do exactly what he has said he can do. And y'all, this isn't the first time. The reason why they begin to call Jesus the prophet is because we saw in Ezekiel the same thing. Y'all, Ezekiel stands there with the spirit and he's like at this valley of dry bones. And all of a sudden the question is, asked, can these bones live? And Ezekiel is like most of us. Only you know God because we don't know it's 
dead folks. It's just bones out here. But all of a sudden, we, we begin to see bodies coming back together because God begins to say, speak to that situation. The problem with many of us is that we don't speak to situations anymore. You don't speak to darkness. You don't speak to things that are dead because you don't have the faith anymore to say that God will create, God will restore, God will give life. I'm here to tell you today that if we began to speak again to situations in our life, God will begin to resurrect and restore things that were once gone. Now, don't you start calling up folks that have gone in the grave because we embalm people these days and we don't want them to come back. It's a different situation. But I promise you this, <laughs> there are some spiritual things in our life that we have given up because we don't believe that God can do it. Sometimes God places us in the end to see if you will have enough strength in your body to say, God, I have seen this thing die. I have seen this business close. I have seen this relationship end. But God, I want to speak life into something that is dead. God, I want to begin to speak light into something that is dark. God, I want you to begin to pull this back together, even though it has been decayed and rotten and fallen apart. God, I want you to speak and create new life. And God, as you do it, I'll continue to say, Lord, by your power, by your your stripes, by your anointing, God, you can do it. God needs us to say that we know that God can do it. And in our faith, God begins to move. So let's not wait sometimes that for us to be broken down and crying. No, begin to speak that thing today. Y'all, there are persons right now who are dealing with situations, but you don't even speak to it because you have accepted the fact that death is coming to it. Not like people's health, but like situations. Your dreams, your desires, your, your goals, your aspirations, you have given up and you stop. But I promise you today, speak life even if it has ended. Y'all, there was a time in my life I thought I was going to be an astronaut. Y'all, I'm too tall to be an astronaut. I don't even want to go to space. I think it's, it's, it's different. But I was younger when I realized I'm too tall. So that means I can't be an astronaut. And I gave up on something that I probably could have said, no, you know what? Let me figure out how. But y'all, we are so quick to let go of things because we have learned to take on defeat more than speak success. We have learned how to do funerals very well. We do funerals so well that we charge you a fortune to die. But do we put the same effort in speaking into existence the things that we ask God for? We have the largest funeral processions. But do we celebrate the same when we see victory in our brothers and sisters in situations? Now, Jesus is watching this funeral march. And, you know, if it was some folks, it was probably a good service. But this lady was crying. And while they were in that second line march going into this grave, I promise you, I can hear Jesus sitting there saying, wait a minute. This lady's life is over. Let me work a miracle. Brothers and sisters, I can hear some of you right now who have already given up. Some of you have left your dreams, your desires, your hopes 10 years, a year ago, two weeks ago, five months ago, 50 years ago. Y'all speak life into that thing. Some of you have given up on saying, you know what, when I get older, I'm going to do this. And you never did it. Y'all speak life into that right now. The problem is that we don't believe that God can do it. And when you don't believe, God doesn't do it. Y'all, I promise you this. If we begin to take seriously the word of God, y'all, we will begin to speak light and light will be present. We'll begin to say heal and people will be healed. We will say, Lord, pull together and God, <laughs> we will hear bones rattling together as people began to come together. Y'all, the reason why the army stood is because not that God said, let it be, because he said, speak my child to the situation. And we began to speak to the situation. Then God said, let me move because my child has said, I need the father. And y'all, that boy, that woman, they both needed the father. That lady who had given up was crying because it was over, but she needed the father. So what happens is Jesus steps in and begins to be the, the mediator of what happens. And he says, you know what? Young man, wake up. And as a young man sits up, and I probably would have dropped him if I was carrying the body because that's some crazy stuff. But all of a sudden, he receives his life back, not knowing what's happening and seeing his mom. And then Jesus says, give the boy to his mother because that is the blessing. It wasn't about the young man coming back to life. He restored a woman who was lost. 
When the world had given up on her, expecting for her to be no one, God says she will live. She will have purpose. She will have a beginning. She will have an ending and it will be so much better than what it was if she would have given up. Brothers and sisters, I don't want you to give up. I can't subscribe to that in this season. And there are some people who want to give up in various situations because you have accepted defeat. I don't accept that for you. And my God, I hope that you don't either. If you have given up, let me speak to you. Let the winds from different places come down and fall on you. Let your body begin to come together and let faith begin to move inside of you. We are not people who should give up because we are victorious. But y'all, we have to believe it for ourselves. If we don't believe that we are victorious, how can we speak to situations? If you don't believe that God can, can hang and stop the sun to allow wars and battles to continue to be fought, who are we? Yeah, we put crosses on everything. They're all over the place. But then we don't have faith when we need God to move. Y'all, we have, we have bore the cross. We have carried those crosses in different places and we all we've seen the spirit move. So why are we giving up? Now, that woman was leading the procession. She could have stayed at home. She could have stayed and continued packing. But you know what? She was going to see herself to the end. But y'all, when she had given up and when she was prepared to bury herself, because that's what was happening. Y'all, Jesus steps in. And Jesus steps in and interrupts your pity party. Y'all thank God for that. Jesus steps in and says, let's slow this funeral down. I hope she got her money back from the funeral home because her young boy got off that coffin that day and he was back in his mother's arms. Not because he was so good, but because she needed God. Today, how many of us need God? How many of us have given up? But even while death is knocking on your dreams, your desires, or even your health, are you speaking to that thing? And even if God takes you out, my God, you should go out knowing that you have done all that you could. That's what we are in this season. So some of you have had those old vision boards that you wrote that you gave up on because last year was so bad. Even into death, God will speak life. But God needs you to do it. Today I declare and I place on all of you that spirit of Ezekiel. I want you to stand and look over into the valley. And I want you to see opportunity. I want you to look into that valley, into that dark place, that place where you have given up and tossed your hopes and dreams into because you said it won't happen. I want you to look into those dark spaces and begin to say, Lord, speak life. Lord, give me hope. Lord, begin to restore. Lord, make a way. God, save. God, deliver. God, heal. God, restore. God, be with whatever it may be. Speak to that dark, that dark spot in your life, your situation, and watch God begin to make bones move. And when you turn around and realize that not only did God fix the situation, but made it better because now you have a testimony, I want you to remember who did it. Not you, not Dr. Field, not whatever person you listen to, not Facebook, not some tarot card. Uh, uh it was God. And when God does it, that's when we say, thank you, God, for all that you have done for me. Even when I gave up, you didn't give up on me. Let us pray. God, we are grateful for your spirit, your anointing in this season. Lord, many of us have taken friends and families into the cemetery. But God, we have also taken our hopes, our dreams, our desires into that same cemetery, even our potential. But Lord, in this season, we're speaking life. Lord, help us to know 
that you are able to restore even that which is dead. And God, as you begin to do that, encourage us, the saints who have forgotten how powerful you are. Encourage us to know that you are in control. You are the great I am. And as you began to create something new, Lord, give us the power and the ability to know that it is you. Lord, we thank you. We love you. We worship you. And we know that you are in control. So, Lord, in those areas in our life that we have given up on. Lord, step in. Help us and remind us that we are your children. Lord, we honor you. We lift you up in the name of Christ. Amen. Everybody, we are excited that you have been with us on this, this Sunday or whenever you're watching the video. Um, but if you don't know Christ as your Savior, we want to offer that relationship to you as you continue to move closer to God in this space. Uh, as a reminder, I want to remind everyone um, that watches this service that, of course, if you go to our church website, we have a great opportunity um, to have a conversation about mission. And I want you to know that even though we are in COVID time, university is speaking life. This church is not dying. We are not going to a grave, but yet we are still growing. So on our church website page, which is listed on this link above me, um, you'll have an opportunity to sign up for a conversation on mission and how we are moving forward and where you are in that. So take the registration to the link and we'll contact you and let you know when those dates are. But this is an opportunity for those who view with us to be a part of what's happening because it doesn't matter where you are. Uh, university now is around the world. And we are grateful for everyone who tunes in with us. So we thank you for taking the time to listen to our phenomenal music ministry and listening to me every time you see me pop up on your screen somewhere. Um, we are grateful um, just to be here. We are grateful for what God is doing in this season. And most of all, our desire is that we continue to serve and be with you, God's children, as long as you're speaking life, speaking power and moving in the season and direction that God has called us to. You are needed, and we need you to. So come out of those cemeteries. Come out of that brokenness, because God is waiting, and we need your help. We thank you so much. We love you, and we will see you next week.